and you reduce the likelihood of a heart attack by 2.34%. Oh, you, you may have Alzheimer's, you know, you may have dementia, you may not be able to remember where you put your keys, your muscles may be sore, you may have a muscle disease, but you're going to reduce the likelihood of your heart attack by 2.34%. We don't distinguish between the chemistry of test scores, and you know what? Now, the institute is so instituted, it's so locked in, that they're, they ain't going nowhere. That's why they have this thing called DTC, direct to consumer, DTC advertising, direct to consumer advertising. It used to be the drug companies didn't advertise. You know, I remember when there was no commercials in the 70s and 80s. I think it started in the late 70s or early 80s when they started to brand drugs, like they brand a Happy Meal, like they brand cereals, like they brand commodities. Before then, it was only doctors who got advertising. Not that that, you know, they got hoodwinked too, but now, this institute is lost, so locked in, they go going nowhere. They spent billions, probably trillions, if you include the, the over-the-counter side of things, on marketing and advertising. So we make sure we ask our doctor, we trust our doctor. And because we have so little, little regard for our own intelligence, for our own ability to understand our bodies, we just do what we're told. And that makes my doctor very happy. Love that. <laughs> That makes my doctor very happy. Yeah, I could just see him now, jumping with joy because your HDL just went up. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Another very, very important distinction, once we understand the, the distinction between uh, uh, clinical chemistry and, and uh, biochemistry, is the distinction between micro-inflammation and inflammation. This is from um, the journal PLOS, Public Library of Science, PLOS Pathogens, quote, Inflammaging, this is what they're calling it now, quote, the chronic state of low-level inflammation seen in many elderly individuals, sometimes called inflammaging, is associated with diseases such as cardiovascular disease and dementia, as well as susceptibility to infections, especially pneumonia, which is the leading cause of death, by the way. Do you hear what, he's, do you hear what they're saying? The chronic state of low-level inflammation. This is what we've been talking about. Microinflammation. Not the inflammation of a black eye, the inflammation of a cell. The inflammation you can't see, the, inflama the inflammation that's invisible. This is so important. This is disease, period, right there. It doesn't matter what your TSH is. It doesn't matter what your HDL is. It doesn't matter what your HDL or LDL or TSH or any other dummy marker that you get from the, uh, the clinical chemistry bamboozled side of medicine. It matters that the body's inflamed at the micro level. Inflammation means defense. It means a protection. Uh, the body's protecting itself from something. A protective, the, pr uh, the protect protection system, built-in protection system is kicked in. And it's now airbagging, surrounding, beavers damming cells. If it happens once in a while, not a bad thing. Good thing. But when it's chronic... Remember, the chronic state, this is what they're saying here, the chronic state of low-level inflammation, you get pockets of death, pockets of, of literally tissue that's dying, that doesn't get fed, that's wallowing in its own waste and poisons, and that isn't being oxygenate, oxygenated. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back on the Bright Side right after this. Don't go away. All right, we're back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. If you're int interested in checking out our Truth Treatment products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, made with lots of vitamin C, no preservative, no fragrance, no filler, no oil, no silicon, nothing your skin doesn't use or can't or has to de detoxify, like the vast majority of skincare products. You know the vast majority of skincare products, by the way, are uh, 80 to 90% water, which means if you having a one ounce product right off the right from the get-go you've got three percent product 27 or three grams of product 27 grams of water in a one ounce product what the heck is that about and the rest of the the solid material is is oil and silicon and wax and preservative and maybe if you're lucky you get something that does something but hardly ever anyway truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com check out all our vitamin c products and our retinol products made with uh, lots of vitamin c have you guys noticed that uh, these rock stars are starting to die off? Lemmy, as my producer just told me, from Motorhead, he was 70, died a couple of uh, died a month ago, and then Bowie, of course, 69, 
had five heart attacks. You know he had five heart attacks the last year of his life. Great. Good job, docs. Five heart attacks in one year. And then, uh, of course, died of cancer. And then yesterday, Glenn Fry from the Eagles, one of my favorite bands. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis and colitis. Nobody, nobody should have either of those, both of them. Classic signs of an immune inflammatory issue. You're going to start to see, you know, all the rock stars from the 70s. Now they're getting to be 60s and 70s, and they're all participating, like most of us, in the modern, med modern medical models care. And they're going to be dropping off age 60s in their late 60s and early 70s. Anyway, 844-236-6010. Chloe in Texas, welcome to the Bright Side. Hello, Ben. How are you? What's going on? How can we help you this morning? Okay. I've been listening to your archives on uh, vitamin K. Yes. And you say that the best is MK7? Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Okay. Why, why? Tell me what your question is. Well, I wouldn't I say... I, go ahead. I haven't found a high dose of it. All I find is like uh, 100 micromilligrams or so. You know, it's harder to find. I personally have found it here in Colorado, but I know some people have told me... Um, some people have told me that they can't find it, can't yeah. find the, the K2 in high quantities. But I, I have found it, and I forgot the name of the company that I'm using. But I have 5,000 micrograms of K2, and that's what you're going to look for is the K2. Yeah. That's, that's how it will be designated. K2, there's three different kinds. And vitamin A is a little bit confusing. I appreciate you bringing this up. Uh, it's one of the more confusing of the vitamins. Uh, there's three different kinds. You've got the plant kind. That's called K1. That's the kind that was first discovered uh, in alfalfa as a, as a uh, blood clotting agent. Helps it, it's processed by the liver. It's a blood clotting drug, a blood clotting nutrient, I should say. Then uh, there's K2, which is made in your gut by gut bacteria. Of course, most of us, as we know, have problems this way because of you know, how we eat and antibiotics in the water, etc. K2 uh, is really specifically, more specifically for calcium, which makes it very important for the blood. Uh, not for thinning the blood, but for, uh, for uh, not so much for clotting the blood, but uh, for blood vessels, although clotting too. Also for uh, the liver and for bones. And K all the Ks are involved with calcium metabolism, but K2 especially. And then I don't like the K3, but that's the drug version. Uh, that's the uh, is K3. So look for K2. 5,000 micrograms a day is what I take. Um, but you'll have to look, you'll have to hunt around for it. If you send me an email, uh, Chloe, yeah. Ben at KSCO.com and put Chloe in there, uh, I'll get you the name of this and I'll announce it on the air. In fact, if I okay. remember on our break, I'll try and, okay. and grab I, my ball. I've been taking the MK4, but I still see a little bit of bruising. You're still getting bruising? Yeah. I mean, not as bad, but still. How are you, uh, what other issues do you have? Bruising should not occur. Yeah, well, I take the probiotics and all that, but um, it got better, but still, sometimes I still see a little bit of bruising. Vitamin C, Beyond Tangy Tangerine? Uh-huh. Yeah, I take, I take um, I'm not taking the BTT right now. I would I suggest if you're not taking, yeah, a lot of vitamin C. Protein also is important. Okay. And uh, make sure that you're uh, doing some kind of resistance training to build up your connective tissue. Okay. Okay, that's okay. what I'd be doing. All okay. right, ma'am. Thanks okay, for your call. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank Appreciate you. your call. Thank you, Chloe. Bye. All right. All right. Let's go to uh, let's go to Jim in Michigan. What's up, man? Welcome to the bright side, Jim. Hey, pharmacist Ben. How you doing? Doing good. What's cooking? Hey, I uh, only because I was a little distressed today uh, hearing that Glenn Fry from the Eagles had died. Yeah. And bummer. the reason I bring it up is my brother's mother-in-law had rheumatoid arthritis. And literally, uh, what she was taking, from what I understand, caused uh, lesions in the lungs. And when she finally passed away, it was because her lungs would respond. How do you, you know, Jim, it, it would be tr funny if it was not tragic. It, it would be a joke. It would be a cartoon of some kind if it wasn't so tragic. Yes, they give you prednisone, one of the most evil drugs on the planet. Even in pharmacy, even in pharmacy school, they tell us this. You know, they're in, in pharmacy school, they tell us what an awful, awful drug prednisone is in terms of its toxicity. And that's the drug for rheumatoid arthritis. Now, now they have these super fancy uh, Humira's and Embrels, which are more targeted than prednisone. Still nasty drugs. But yes, uh, it, it, it's tragic. And as I say, it would be funny if it wasn't such a horrible, horrible thing. Yeah, I'd never heard of anybody dying from rheumatoid arthritis. It, it, I guess he had you colitis too, but... Well, rheumatoid arthritis... Rheumatoid arthritis is the tip of the iceberg. 
we see the rheumatoid arthritis. That's the symptoms. But the rheumatoid arthritis is, called, is caused by a, a, a dysfunction of the defense system, the immune system. It's a defensive response. You know, Jim, I, what do you do for a living, buddy? Well, I'm a wallpaper uh, painter, and I also am an artist, and I also make okay. sauces. For okay, so you're, <laughs> so you're, a lot of you sound like an intelligent guy. You know, you're listening to this program, so you're, you're obviously somewhat intelligent, <laughs> right? Right? Absolutely. So, so d what, d what is difficult to understand about the nature of inflammation and defense? And if you have a defensive response, you've got an offending agent. Is that complicated? Well, it seems to be complicated to doctors. They don't quite get it, but I, I just, it's tragic how many people they kill a year. My goodness. Right. You but know? The point I'm making here is that it's an offensive thing that's happening. The body's being offended. This is the problem. The body is being offended. So you have, we have words like inflammation and immunity and autoimmunity, but really what we're talking about is the body's being offended. So the, 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 the logic here is just find the offending agent. And rheumatoid arthritis is always going to be food. Always, almost always it's going to be food. And considering we've completely changed 180 degrees, we've changed how we eat over the last 200 years, the fact that we have 100 plus million Americans with chronic degenerative diseases or, or on the way to chronic degenerative diseases is just makes, it's a, a logical, uh, it's, it's a logical uh, 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 conclusion. It's the next step after we've done what we've done to our environment and to our food supply. All right, Jim, I'm going to motivate. Thanks so much for your call. Appreciate it. Take care, bro. Hey, buddy, Take care. All right, Colin, Oklahoma City, welcome to the bright side. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's going on? What's going on? How can we help you, man? Where uh, was... Yeah, I just want to let you know I talked to my, uh, uh, I talked to you a week or so ago about my wife. Uh, she was having, after, you know, after, after we had our baby, she was having uh, postpartums and everything. Postpartum depression, was it? I vaguely remember. Give me a little, a little uh, snapshot. Yeah, she points. was, uh, she was dealing with a lot of emotional things, uh, quite a bit of uh, depression, anxiety, and I told you but, that her uh, doctors were prescribing her, uh, or wanting to prescribe her like Xanax, antidepressants. I do remember. I do remember talking to you. That was like Friday or Thursday last week, I think. Hey, listen, Colin, i got to take a break. Can you hang on? I hate to do this to you. Can you hang on just to yeah, just yeah, do no a break? Okay, thank you, Colin. Got lines open for you, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Back on the bright side, I'm pharmacist Ben from New York University School of Medicine. Psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis, two miserable conditions, especially psoriatic arthritis. Symptoms curbed by bariatric surgery. Hmm, imagine that. You eat less food. That's what bariatric surgery is. It's a gastric bypass. You eat less food and your psoriasis goes away. Hmm. Fancy that. All right. Colin in Oklahoma City. Continue, my friends. Uh, postpartum yeah, depression, just, postpartum yeah, issues. I just, to, oh, <laughs> yeah, I just want to let you know. Uh, you, you told me to uh, get her on uh, vitamin A, E, D, K, uh, lots of fatty acids, uh, fermented foods, uh, protein. Less, low sugar, uh, low sugar, low. Keep yeah, the sugar. No, yeah. uh, no dessert. No tolerance for dessert for sweets is what you said. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I uh, I gave her information. And we've been uh, we've been doing that, and we have seen a. A substantial change. In, Can I get a uh, praise the Lord out of you, Colin? This is what I'm talking. This is what I'm talking about, brother. <laughs> I mean, dude, I'm telling you, this is the craziest model that we have. When you do little things like that. Uh, by the way, did your doctor tell you any of this? How much did it cost no, you to do this? No, did you have to fill no, out any no. insurance forms? Wait in any lines? Humiliate yourself in a doctor's office? <laughs> Said, any of this, any of this. Isn't that amazing, Colin? Thank you so much for sharing that. Because you know, I, I I know this. You guys are getting benefits because I talk to folks all the time, but people don't share on the radio. Share on the radio, you will save lives, Colin. You sharing on the radio has has just saved lives. Thank you, my friend. Oh, awesome. I, I pray that it does. Uh, and then also, I wanted to ask you, to have you. Um, my, my wife's been telling me about something her friends been telling me about 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 the keto diet about keto uh, ketogenic diet. Yes, I think is that what you mean? Yes. Okay, I don't know what the keto diet. I think you mean ketogenic oh, diet. I yes. I think it is keto. I think the, it is. Uh, okay, yeah. the ketogenic diet is a diet that's been around for since Hippocrates, 
And uh, it's been used actually until drugs came out. Doctors were actually using it for seizure disorders. It's basically what we talk about on this program. You know, paleo, you've heard the term paleo, right, Colin? I'm sure everybody's heard yeah. of paleo by now. Paleo is kind of a marketing scam. Right? When paleo first came out 20 years ago, when I started talking about it, it was actually first invented and coined by a guy named Lauren 